there is a menu bar. There is a menu bar in the uh, under the screen. So if you have questions, please put them in the Q and A section, because my team, my amazing team, is um, is helping me today, and they will be addressing your questions. They will be uh, you know taking your questions and addressing them. If you have uh, participation, and uh, I'm expecting a lot of participation today because I will be asking questions. And uh, uh, if those questions, if you have an answer for me, please put them in a chat. So chat is separate. Chat is a, there's a chat button, and then there's a Q&A. For everyone who is, who is watching us on YouTube, also, uh, you may participate in a chat. I will really appreciate that. OK, let's begin. I'm going to share my screen. And I will ask my team if if uh, if my uh, screen share can, coming up. Um, okay. Yeah, we got it. Okay, awesome. So I'm gonna make it a full screen here. All right, perfect. So today we're gonna be looking at um, how to discover how the uh, our family banking system transformed our lives, saving us thousands every month. Uh, let's start with the positive power up. So our team believes that the negative mindset cannot be thankful or grateful, right? So if there is one thing that you're grateful for today, please share in the chat window and uh, uh, just to you know tune in for something positive today. So. I'm really positive about my team supporting the webinar today. And uh, please share if you have um, anything positive today or uh, something you're grateful for. Maybe it can be your, your family, can be your work, can be uh, this webinar as well. Please share in the, in the chat. All right, we have uh, thankful for this additional information, freedom to travel, enjoy, um, presentation, family life. Absolutely. Thank you so much for, for your participation. <clears throat> so at Ascendant Financial, we have an amazing team and we practice the process of becoming your own banker in our lives. So everyone, um, we believe that not only this is an amazing concept for our clients, but also this is an amazing, uh, amazing concept for us because we want to take control over finances and revolutionize them in our lives. And today we're gonna to be looking at how you can do um, the same. Objective for this presentation. So the number one objective is to review how we think about finances. Number two is uh, I'm gonna show you what the problem is of using the traditional banking system. And number three is um, to help better understand the solution. We will also review a case study and I will share my family banking system, what it looks like after three years of um, getting started. So what is a family banking system? So Nelson Nash um, is a discoverer and, and the creator of the infinite banking concept. He shared that for most folks, it's a major paradigm shift, right? So we used to think about money in a different way, in a traditional way. And um, the infinite banking concept, if, to understand it, you need to have an open mind. You need to think out of the box, right? Uh, because it's not about, it's super complicated uh, concept. It is very simple. It's ridiculously simple. So in order to understand it, you just need to understand the problem and the solution will be clear for you. Nelson Nash uh, had five golden rules. So, and number one is thinking long range. So thinking long range is not looking for instant gratification. It is not looking for something that I can take out of this concept today. How this can, can help me. It's like a silver bullet that can help me solve my financial problems or something like that. It's not that. It is thinking at least one or two generations past yours. That is long-term long, long -term thinking, right? So don't be afraid to capitalize is number two. Nelson would say that... Uh, if you uh, want to have a solid system, you want to put a deposit into the system. You want to be able to capitalize the system. Don't steal the piece. And if you look at those um, five golden rules, you will notice that they all are actually talking to you 
in terms of human behavior, right? So human behavior is something super critically important that can change uh, the way you're, you're building your wealth. If you have a tool, you can use it properly and build something with the tool or use it properly to achieve your objective. But it is, uh, it is a human behavior that can actually improve the, the work. For example, if you're like a carpenter, your skills uh, can, um, you know, can help you build something beautiful from this, right? And your behavior, what you do with this tool actually changes everything. So for, the inf for someone who is practicing infinite banking, there is a tool, but the way we use it may be, may be different from, from one person to person, from one household to, ho to household, and uh, the outcome will be absolutely different. So Nelson was addressing human behavior. He would say, don't steal the piece. Um, it comes from the book, from, uh, from this book, uh, Becoming Your Own Banker, Banker by R. Nelson Nash. I will share uh, where you can buy this book. And Nelson is talking about a business that you are at the same time a owner in the business and your customer in the business. And he's saying that uh, your human behavior may actually ruin your business. If you're if you start stealing from your grocery store, for example, right? If you're a grocery store owner, if you uh, steal from your grocery store, then your grocery store will not do well. And uh, the num number four rule is don't do business with banks. Um, that that's pretty obvious, right? Uh, and uh, our goal, our objective is to help you become your own banker, not to um, achieve your banker's objective, but to achieve your objective. And number five, I think it's, it's the most important one, rethink your thinking. So Nelson Nash was a person, an individual who actually created the infinite banking concept. He discovered it. He, I mean, the, the, the tool existed long time before. He was just a person who discovered it. And uh, there was a, a great film uh, recorded just before he passed away in 2019. I wasn't lucky enough to meet um, Nelson in person, but uh, I really enjoyed this this film. And my team, my amazing team, I will ask my teammates to share a link to watch this film. If you haven't watched it, you have an opportunity today to go ahead and save this link to watch later. It's about one hour long uh, movie about who Nelson was, uh, a documentary film, I would say, who Nelson was and how he used this, um, this, this uh, system in his life and business. And uh, Nelson wrote uh, a book, which is titled Becoming Your Own Banker. Have you read this book? Please uh, share in a chat if you had a chance to read this book so far, or if you haven't, please put an A, a N. Uh, Vern, may I ask, uh, may I ask you what, uh, what, what, um, question, what answers do, do we have there in the chat? Yeah, Roman, absolutely. We're getting uh, a mixed bag here, but a lot of people uh, have certainly read the book. So that's, that's, awesome. that's good news. A lot of smart people on the call today. Yeah, a lot of smart, smart people. That's awesome. So the book was written in, in, 20, uh, in the year 2000, and it was sold over 500,000 copies so far. Do you want to know why? Because it works. It's simply because it works, right? So Nelson in, says in his book, and there's actually another book, I, which I also wanted to share today, this book is titled Building the Warehouse of Your Wealth, Building Your Warehouse of Wealth. So, and this uh, quote actually comes from this book, everything begins with the way you think. And I wanted to, to read another uh, quote, um, which I find uh, really fascinating. 5% of people think, and 10% think that they think, and the other 85% would rather, would rather die than think. Uh, by uh, Thomas Alva Edison. So why is thinking important? Because thinking about something, it, it creates, creates vision, right? So Nelson would say that infinite banking concept is an exercise of imagination, reason, logic, and prophecy. So you have to have, an, uh, you have, to have imagination to understand how you can, you can use this uh, system and what it can help you create in your life and business. 
So how can you revolutionize your finances with a family banking system? Let's talk about the um, uh, word itself, revolutionizing. What is that? It is changing something radically or fundamentally. This is what this word means. So the, something existed before, and then there was someone who decided to revolutionize it. Revolutionize it, right? Meaning that they will change it radically or fundamentally in order to achieve a, an, an objective, right? So the Wright brothers revolutionized the um, way people fly, right? So the names were Orville and Wilbur. They did not invent the laws of physics. They just invented a new way to use them to their advantage and to our advantage as well, because we all, uh, the way we travel now changed completely. The invention of the airplane revolutionized how people travel today. We, we all travel and we travel frequently. And it would not be possible without the invention of um, the Wright brothers. And uh, from this book, another quote that I wanted to, to read here is about prejudice. So many people believe that they're thinking when actually they're only rearranging their prejudices by Leonard Reed. So many people are skeptical, right? So they would say, you know, people cannot fly. It's impossible. Um, but the Wright brothers said, yes, we can. We just need to, we just need to have a right tool. And another set of people would say, you know, you need a bank to save or, or to finance things that as it relates to your needs. But Nelson said, no, you don't really need a banker to warehouse your wealth. You can become your own banker. And that is, that is why he wrote this amazing book. And if you ha haven't, haven't read this book, you have an opportunity today. <clears throat> so Nelson Nash did not invent banking. Banking existed way long before, before Nelson discovered it. He just discovered a new way of solving for family, family's need for financing as it relates to their needs. So what is a traditional way of banking? You probably already know how banking works, right? So we all know this, um, but just to kind of summarize, the traditional banking system wants us to work hard and get paid. And when we, when we get paid, again, it's not about just, just T4 employment or working for someone. It's also about your business. You get income coming in, right? So you have to have a place to deposit it somewhere because yeah, it, it may be your, you know, safe deposit box. It may be your vault at home, or it can be someone else's bank. But the problem with your, you know, safe deposit box or shoe box is that this money is not working for you. And in order to spend this money, you need to make a transaction. You need to take money from this uh, place where you store, you store your wealth, and you need to exchange it for the goods or services, right? So, and and if it's cash, then it's not growing. If it's gold or silver, it is not growing and it's even harder. You need to exchange it for uh, for money and then you need to make a transaction. The banking system is in place because it is so easier to make transactions with the banking system, right? So uh, there is a someone else's bank that was established way before I opened an account with this bank. When I deposit it, then I need to pay for my bills and expenses. And the problem number one here is that when I pay my bills and expenses, uh, my, the money is leaving me. And then when I have, let's say, uh, let's say I don't uh, have money to pay for, for my bills. Let's say I only have money to pay for half of my bills, right? So some people have enough cash to pay for all their bills. Some people don't have enough cash to, cash to pay for all their bills. So they, they will borrow, right? So the bank will also provide them an option to borrow. And what it entails is paying interest, right? So, and then let's say we paid all our bills and then we save, um, and on average, uh, people save five to 10%. Today, I actually met, I met a client who actually is saving 25% of all they make. And they're actually doing a very good job, you know, saving. But on average, an average American or average Canadian actually saving five to 10%. So, and then what's left is being either invested or uh, put into some sort of, uh, you know, savings place, right? And 
people of the, uh, the clients of the bank would actually seek a higher rate of return in order to increase their investments or to make sure that they say their savings work. And when they do this for many, many years, they hopefully want to retire. And if there is uh, enough money to retire, they retire. If, they're, if there's, there's not enough money, you know, we, we all see a lot of older folks who actually are still working. They, because, not because they like to work, right? But probably because they cannot retire comfortably right now. So there is a market risk is also associated with investing. So, and if we talk about the banking function, there's always in every transaction that happens, there's always four characters in financial play. There is a depositor and there is a borrower. And you, uh, you're familiar with this function, right? So the depositor needs a warehouse for the capital. The depositor needs to put money somewhere. The depositor needs to put money into some safe place where the money would, would be safe. And he also wants to grow equity, but with the traditional banking system, it's almost impossible because you know regular uh, checking accounts um, provide liquidity, but and convenience, but they don't provide growth of the capital. And then you need to take money and pay for stuff, pay for uh, to buy a car, to buy to pay for your mortgage. You need to sometimes you need to borrow money, right? So you need to borrow money from the bank. So the borrower needs access to cash. And if they don't have enough, they borrow and they need to pay interest to the bank owner. So someone else is your banker and a bank owner. It's not usually you, right? It's not yourself. So once you put your money into the bank, there is a banker and the banker provides access to cash uh, when you need it. And the banker is responsible for growing the banker's equity um, and controls in terms of financing, the terms of financing. So when you take a mortgage, when, some, when a borrower takes a mortgage, then the banker will uh, come up with terms. Okay, you have this interest rate, you have this repayment schedule, you also need to provide your income uh, credit score, you need to prove why you need this money. And then also the banker is responsible for taking a uh, security for the, for, the, for, the, for the loan. The bank owner is a fourth character who, is, who has established this entity. The banker has the warehouse of the capital ready for you to deposit money into. And he makes money by charging interest. The banker is the beneficiary of all the money that is coming, coming in, right? So there are four of them, the depositor, the borrower, the banker, and the bank owner. And in terms of the flow of money, uh, the money is flowing from the depositor to the banker. When the depositor makes a deposit, the money is flowing and the uh, being, uh, being going from the depositor to the banker. And then when the borrower takes a loan, the borrower starts start making payment. The payments, there's a, there's a flow of money that is going to the bank owner. So in terms of the depositor and the borrower, where is the money flowing? To the depositor and the borrower or from the depositor and the borrower? Vern, may I ask you which, which um, answers do we have in the chat? The direction of the money flow, where is it going from and towards who is it going um, going for? So in terms of regular people, ordinary people, right? So is money flowing from or to uh, the, the bank customers? Well, let's see here. People are being a little bit shy. I also have my uh, YouTubes as Jason Lower here. Oh, I hear, see some people they are saying from the depositor to the bank. Some people yeah. are saying from. So some people are participating here, and I was just going to check in on the, the live stream to see if we're getting any uh, chat in there. Oh, someone yeah. said toward the bank. So there you go. You're even getting some some live stream people on YouTube, Roman. Well done. Awesome. I appreciate I appreciate the answers, everyone who's participated. I appreciate um, that saying that yeah, those are right right answers. The money is flowing from the depositor to the banker, and then from the borrower to the bank owner. The payments are coming from 
ordinary people. If you don't have a place to store money, then money is leaving you. And then you're all familiar, familiar with the process of banking, but the problem is that you're not controlling it. But guess what? There's always someone else, someone else who is controlling it. So when you have your bills to pay, you got your money, you got your payment, paycheck, business profit, whatever it is. Let's say you have expenses, furniture, vacations, clothes, you know, mortgage payment, boat, chiropractor, physio, uh, you know, expense, car payments, credit cards, appliances. You need to pay those bills. Maybe you open your drawer, you take out your those envelopes that you know you get you got your bills by mail or by email now. <laughs> So now money needs to needs to leave you. So which direction is money leaving? It going? Is it to you or is it from you? The answer is obvious. The the errors, the error, red error showing that money is leaving you. So all these dollars is actually landing into someone else's uh, checking account or wallets. And now you paid those bills. Awesome, great job. But where's your money? You may be wondering, where's my money now? So you may be looking in your wallet. Yes, all those bills and are paid. All those, all that stuff is is purchased. But where's my money now? So the banking function is outsourced. That's the problem. So it is you don't owe, own the banking function in your life. It is outsourced. And if it if it is outsourced, in whose interest do you think the banker is is working? Is it for your, your interest? Is it the or the bank owner? Do we have any, any answers? In which favor or in which interest is the banker working? Is it my yes. favor or is it the bank owners? Yes, we're getting some people chiming in here, just uh, getting their fingers going on the typing. We're seeing bank owners so far. A couple people are saying bank owner. Yeah. And many people and are seeing it for the bank. You got it. Awesome. You got it. So do you think you would do a better job if you control the banking function? Probably yes, right? So ask yourself a question. Who is the banker in your life? Is it someone where your money is going or is it you? The banker, is it you who provides access to cash, who is responsible for growing the banker's equity and controls the terms of financing? Who is the bank owner? Is it you or someone else who has the warehouse of capital and makes money by charging interest? You need to understand that everything, every single transaction you make is a financing transaction. You're either paying cash or borrowing money to pay for things, right? So if you're paying cash, you need to save up this cash first. And then when you saved up, then you pay your bill or your expense, your purchase. It is it is any, any expense. Let's say you purchased a a uh, MacBook. My son just purchased a MacBook, but I'll tell you later how he financed it. Now, if he was to save up cash for that, then all this cash is gone now. He has a MacBook. But is he losing interest or or he got he he basically never paid any interest to anyone and he's okay? The answer is he's losing interest because this this cash there's a lot of cash, you know, you know, MacBooks cost a lot of money. This cash could have been invested into something and produced an interest. So by paying cash, you're actually losing interest, which is financing decision. When you borrow money, if you don't have cash, you don't have to wait until you save up for this expense. You can spend your credit card right away. You can swipe your card. You can tap into your line of credit. And then it comes with a high cost because you are paying interest and you all know this. So, and all this paid and lost interest is leaving you forever. It's never coming back to you if you're not the banker. So in terms of moving forward in, you know, uh, when, you, when you walk in, which vehicle, which tool will help you move forward faster? Is it a uh, treadmill or is it just your, you know, your feet? So what do you think will, who, who is moving forward faster in terms of the distance? Is it the lady 
on a treadmill or is it the guy who actually had a head a headwind heavy headwind i know these pictures are hilarious i just wanted to kind of see if this resonates resonates with our listeners today burn do what do we have okay let's see see if we get some comments here <laughs> the the guy with the headwind <laughs> yeah actually yeah actually he is he is moving forward faster than the lady because he is using his 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 feet his legs and he is yes he has a head a headwind but um at least he's not moving moving backwards so i would i would say that this this uh picture represents uh someone who is paying cash and the lady walking on a treadmill represents someone who is borrowing money and then paying interest and then pretty much you know uh, arriving at zero all the time right so is there a third option is there a better option this is a big question so you need something that pushes you forward like a tailwind right so what can it be to you know to help you move forward faster and the answer is there is a tool which can help you walk faster and it's called a power boots or power shoes uh, basically when you walk they just push you forward they help you advance uh, in terms of the distance that you that you cover and that saves a lot of energy for you no matter how fast you're walking you're actually moving way faster than than the regular people walk This is a new invention, and I really love the love this analogy where, you know, this tool hel helps you actually <laughs> move faster. I've never tried this one, but uh, it is on my bucket list to actually try to walk in these ones. They're quite expensive, though. And the solution for that is uninterrupted compounding. This is something that pushes you forward. This is something that Nelson would say creates a tailwind in your life, right? So how does it mo move you forward? By daily growth of your capital. So that's how infinite banking can help you move forward. So the daily growth of your capital is, is moving you ahead financially. So financial tailwind is all about recapturing the interest you're either paying to banks or losing by paying cash. So all these problems of either losing interest to banks, if you borrow or paying cash, the financial tailwind can, can help you recapture. Now, if you have this financial tailwind, and the payments now come back to you because you are the banker in this transaction and the direction of payment you see is changed now not only you paid for these expenses but the payments are actually coming back to you as a financial tailwind and you have a, you have money and you also paid for these expense uh, expenses for these things in life and at the same time your money is actually growing every single day so let me ask you, are you committed to creating this financial tailwind? If if this financial tail, if I prove to you today that this financial tailwind actually works, would you be committed to creating this financial tailwind? Vern, let, let me help you uh, what our the listeners say. Well, Roman, I'll, I'll get us started. I'm definitely create, uh, definitely committed to creating a financial tailwind. <laughs> awesome. And we're getting a lot of people saying yes. Started. Sorry? You already started, Vern, so I know that you're on track on, on creating this financial tailwind, and uh, I started it too. It's not a, it's not a silver bullet that, that happens overnight, right? So it's a process. It's not a product. So we need to get going on this, and the faster we go, the more, the easier it is to actually uh, pro progress financially. So uh, Agreed. Which, which answers do we have? Yeah, we've got a lot of people saying yes, so that's good. Absolutely. Lots of uh, comments. Absolutely. Thank you so much for for being committed. And uh, today you will learn how to how to get started. And the tool is participating and dividend paying whole life insurance. And today we're going to be talking about this tool, and I will show you exactly how this tool helped me recapture a lot of a lot of money, uh, and and uh, that I was losing uh, to banks. So you're not limited to just one policy. So it doesn't have to be your system of banking. The family banking system does not have to be just one policy. 
It can be a policy on a wife, can be a policy on a husband, can be a policy on a child, can be a policy on a second child, right? So it can also be a policy on a business partner in your business. It can also be a policy on a key person in your company, right? So there is a personal policy you can create. There is a policy in your business you can create. And all these policies create your financing monetary system, uh, sorry, your family monetary system. So you can also ensure uh, every person in your life several times, right? So you can also create a second policy on a wife, second policy on a, on a, on a husband. Um, and you will learn later on that uh, in my family, my uh, all my almost all my family members are actually uh, uh, insured twice or even three times with different policies, right? So and that all creates one one pool of of uh, banking where I can tap into every, every of those policies and borrow from it and then pay on my terms, pay it back on my terms. Let's look at the properties of this tool. So there are four uh, major properties of this tool, and I wanted to review um, how the properties works and and help you better understand the um, how how the tool actually works and helps you um, advance financially. Number one is premium. So premium is uh, think of, of a premium is uh, as a as a deposit in a bank, right? So it can be annual or monthly. It, it doesn't have to be just annual or just monthly, right? It can also be quarterly. Um, so, and you as a policy owner, you decide on what the premium is, how big the premium is. It's not the insurance company is telling you or your life or your advisor is telling you how much your premium should be. You decide if you want to put 1,000 uh, a year into the system or 100,000 a year. We actually have people who put um, seven figure into this system a year. Uh, as clients of our company. So the premium, what it does, if it's structured properly, it increases the death benefit every single year. And uh, how this works, um, there is a great video that is titled on our YouTube channel, on Bankers Vault YouTube channel. It is titled Making Sense of Paid Up Edition. So Richard Canfield is an amazing uh, teammate and an amazing advisor who actually explains exactly how this tool works. And it's just a very short video, seven minutes long. And I will ask my team to please share this, this link. You can save it later. Please don't watch it now because it will take you focus from, from this presentation today. But save it for, for later. And you can watch this video to better understand how exactly the premium helps you increase the death benefit. Why do we want to increase the death benefit? Is because um, the death benefit and the total cash value must match at age 100. And the insurance company is responsible to fulfill this guarantee. Again, I'll, I'll say again, your total debt benefit and your total cash value must match at age 100. And insurance company is responsible to fulfill this guarantee. What you can control, you can control how big of a debt benefit you have. If, you, if your behavior is focused on increasing the debt benefit, you will know exactly how to do that. And your advisor will also help you set it up properly so that your policy is structured in the right way and your death benefit increases every single year. Number one is cash value. There is equity inside of your policy, which is growing daily. This is exactly the uh, financial tailwind, which creates uh, ability for you to borrow against this cash value. There is a tax-free growth inside of the, of the cash value. Uh, if you are uh, using this, this tool properly and, and, and correctly, and if it is structured properly, then the, there is a tax-free. Who loves who loves tax-free? Probably everyone loves tax-free, right? I would, I would be number one uh, to answer this question. So the cash value also represents the net present value of the future death benefit. This is this is the essence of the cash value. It's a net present value of the future death benefit. So the higher the death benefit is, the more pres net present value you will get. And every single day, this cash value is going up to match the death benefit at age 100. 
the policy owner can actually increase the da daily growth based on their behavior. If your behavior is focused on increasing this daily growth, uh, then you will do everything it takes to, to improve or to make this policy better, right? For example, when I op opened my first policy, my daily growth was uh, $6.50 per day, right? So, and then next year, it increased to $11 per day. Next year, it increased to $15 per day. Now, uh, that is based on my behavior. If my behavior wasn't focused on, on, on increasing, on compounding, then I, 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 wouldn't, I would not know how to do that, right? So I would not increase my, my daily growth. I would not compound. So you need to understand that cash value is not money. It is capital, right? It's like a commodity which can be easily converted into cash. It is as easy as applying online and getting money deposited in your bank account in a in couple of days. You don't have to go through you know, noisy questions. What is your credit score? What is your um, goal for this loan? What you need to you don't need to commit to the repayment schedule. All you need to do is answer some couple questions. How you want your money deposited, either via sent to you via check or deposited in a bank account, and and how much you want. That's pretty much it. So and cash, when you have cash in hand, that is money that is not working for you. Your capital is working for you. So cash value is not money is a capital and equity that is increasing and working for you and compounding every day. Death benefit, it's a third um, component of the tool of the participating dividend paying whole life insurance. And it is received tax-free to the name beneficiary of the policy. So let's say I opened the policy today and tomorrow I got uh, you know hit by a truck. Then my family will receive death benefit uh, tax free and whoever I name my beneficiary of course it is my wife but um, the life insurance comp uh, life insurance company will provide this death benefit and it will be paid in a uh, very short period of time of course there there has to be some 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 work uh, uh, you know some some paperwork but uh, the death claims are going to be paid when someone passes away not if but when because this is whole life insurance it's not term insurance right also that benefit provides protection to the family in the case of the life insurance that passes away so in terms of you know protecting insurance risks if i die today i have seven children and i have uh, my wife my family who is you know dependent on me i want to make sure that uh, if something happens to me, my family will be okay. They don't have to sell my house. They don't have to, my wife doesn't have to go look for a job or she doesn't, you know, have to sell any investments or any assets and stuff like that. And then the fourth one is a dividend. So dividend is a divisible surplus distributed, distributed between all the policy owners. So at the end of the year, the insurance company will uh, look at the performance of a specific class of the policies. And uh, that is, you know, relevant relevant to a specific age group, and they will see. Okay, so how many premiums we collected? Okay, how many death claims we we paid, and uh, how our investments performed? Right. So they put money to very reliable investments where it creates a lot of profit. So uh, profit from all lines of operation for the insurance company creates a pool of money which is called participating. Um, pool of money or, or fund where at the end of the year the money is being the profit is being distributed between the uh, participating policy owners only and it is based on a contribution principle so whoever has more death benefit whoever puts more money into the system then this policy will receive higher dividend than someone who who, who is paying less and has a little bit less the death benefit if structured properly and designed properly, the dividend will be tax-free. And once it, it is declared, it can never be repossessed or lose its value. <clears throat> so let's look at a case study. 
meet Jackson and Marsha. They are a young family. And uh, let's look at some quick facts about Jackson and Marsha. So before they discovered the infinite banking concept, so they were, uh, Jackson was uh, 35 and Marsha was 34. They have two children. Jackson is in sales. And, and he's getting salary and commission and Marsha doesn't work. So Jackson's gross income is $95,000 um, and Marsha gets uh, Canada child benefit for, their, for, her, uh, for her children. And that's uh, coming up to 1,100 per month. And then that's, that is tax free. So the gross income for the family is, is $108,200. And then total net is just under 90,000 after the um, taxes are paid. So once they discovered the infinite banking concept, their objective of building wealth uh, were, they had four objectives, main objectives. Objective number one, they needed family protection. They didn't think that they need life insurance before, right? So when they came to see an advisor, they actually said that it is super important for them to have protection in case something happens to them. They wanna have a peace of mind if an unthink unthinkable happens. Number two is passive income. Right. They want to make sure that when it when the time comes to for them to retire, they will have enough to support their lifestyle at, at passive income time. They also have uh, want to have access to capital. So if they need to finance large expenses, let's say a vacation or to buy a car or to um, maybe to do something else, they, they, they need access to capital on their terms. They also wanted to recapture uh, car they leased. So they have a leased car and they're paying a lot of money into this, this lease. If you've read Nelson's book, you probably already know that leasing car is probably the worst uh, possible way to buy cars, right? Uh, but if you haven't um, watched this, watch this uh, sorry, if you haven't read the book, um, you will learn that it is not the best way. So they wanted to recapture that. They also needed an emergency fund in case something breaks down or they need money for to, car, uh, to repair the car or they need money to maybe fix the furnace or if the roof leaks, they need money and they need access to capital. And they also want to make sure that they have enough capital when the opportunity com comes by. You know, when, when there's a one of the lifetime opportunity and if it shows up and if you're not prepared for that, then you can take it, but if you have access, access to capital on your terms, and ideally not someone else's money, there's a lot of gurus who actually want you to put money, someone else's money, borrow from you know private investors and put money into this deal. Yes, that, that's great, but you're still kind of financing, you're depending on, on that person, right? So if you have access to capital on your terms, if you are the banker in this transaction, then you can control the repayment schedule, you can control the, uh, the amount of payment and, and stuff like that. And objective number one is to leave a legacy. Uh, they wanna pass on the legacy to the children tax eff uh, efficiently, tax effectively. Let's look at their current assets and liabilities on one page. So the current assets, they have 5,000 in a bank and there's, they're contributing about 11,000 per year. That's just under 1,000 per month. Um, they put it in a bank account. Assets num asset number two is investment. So basically they have a tax-free account where they have the balance of $65,000 and they could, they're contributing 13,000 per year. Basically they're maxing out their um, TFSA right for two people and the uh, for the last couple of years their return of return of uh, uh, rate of return for the investment uh, has been 4.1 percent which is not bad current liabilities the mortgage is 395,000 they're making payment every month the second liability is a car lease like I like I said the payment for the car lease is 830 dollars per month that must be a very good uh, car for them. And all this money is leaving them every single month. All this money can never be um, readvanced or used again. And the interest rate on a mortgage is 2.5%, and that is fixed, right? That is fixed um, rate. 
And when you look at this, this interest rate and 2.5% and 4.1%, do you think they're doing okay? Or I mean, in terms of the rate, looks like their investment is doing pretty well, right? 4.1% versus 2.5%. What comes up to you when you when you see these rates? Are they doing okay or? Would you would you have any any objections to that? Vern, do we have any participation? Let's see, we got Roman. The interest rate rate of return on the investment is 4.1%. The interest rate on the mortgage is 2.5%. So how are they doing so far? Any participation in the chat? Let's see here. If someone's going to be brave enough to share something with us. Maybe the question isn't clear. 4.1 is a decent rate. <laughs> it better is. than most. Some, someone said better than most. Steve said better than most. Yeah. So, but the interest rate can cannot tell you the whole picture, right? Would you agree, Vern? Absolutely. Let's look at actually how much money they're paying to, to banks in terms of the interest. So if you look at the profit they made last year on 65000 it comes to $2,665. And the interest paid for the, for the mortgage is actually 22500 So how is that now? What comes, to you, what comes up to you when you see these two numbers? Are they kind of advancing ahead or are they kind of moving ahead or moving backward? To me, it looks like about one step forward and nine steps backwards. Exactly. Does it look like this? Does it remind you this poor dog that is trying to <laughs> move ahead, but it is just in in fact it's just coming back all the time. <laughs> no matter how hard you work, right? <laughs> yeah, no matter how it tries, it just not not advancing. So that reminds me of this, this family. They are doing okay, but then all the interest that they pay into banks is actually being lost. And it's just, just bringing them back, bringing them back. So let's look at the current assets and current liabilities. So the profit they made is 2665 and the interest they pay 22,500. So my question to you is, should Jackson and Marsha focus on increasing rate of return on their investments or should they learn how they can actually stop losing interest? It's a rhetorical question. No, no matter how you try, what rate of return should you, should you look at to actually make up for the difference, right? I think it's almost impossible. And they actually discovered that there is a way to recapture this, this uh, interest that's losing to, to pay into banks. So what they did was they opened up two life insurance policies and they put all of their uh, tax-free savings account, they withdrew it and they put it back and they put it into the policy as a first payment. And the premiums um, after that, after they put all the money into the account was 12,000 per year. So how they did it, the policy is structured this way. So the premium is 12,000 for Jackson and 12,000 for Marsha. The minimum payment for Jackson is 4,700 per year, and the maximum premium is 21,150. So in the first year, they maxed out Jackson, Jackson's policy and Marsha's policy. It's, it's exactly the same. By the way, Marsha has um, additional protection for the children. So they didn't decide to open policies for the children right away, but they want to do it anyways, but not immediately. So they wanted to kind of start it maybe a couple, couple months later. But just to have protection for the children, they put a additional protection on her policy. And now it comes to the same exact number. So they put 21,150 immediately. And because they backdated the policies, they actually put two of these premiums right away. So it comes to 42,300. And then uh, they paid, uh, later on they paid uh, $12,000 each. Right. So starting death benefit, starting death benefit is, is $762,000 and uh, for, for Jackson and $798,000 for Marsha. The cash value in the same very same month, 
when they paid it, uh, the cash value in Jackson's policy is 25,400. And the daily growth is $9.50 every single day. The cash value increases every single day in, in Jackson's policy. Loan available in Jackson's policy immediately is 22,860. And in, Marsha, in Marsha's policy, it's, it's very similar. And the same month when they started these policies, the cash value is 25,500 and the daily growth is $9.60. And the loan available is $22,860. And as you can see, let's look at the total numbers. Uh, in the first year, they paid $66,300 in premiums. Next year, they paid $24,000 in premiums. The minimum number, the minimum payment they, they need to pay uh, is actually $9,431 per year. So that is that gives them flexibility, right? So they decide how much to put in. If they want to put in the maximum amount, then that will just make every number on the policy better. Total death benefit for Marsha and Jackson is 1.56 million right now. As you can see, the starting death benefit was 762 and 798. But if you, if you add these numbers, you will see that this number is actually lower than 1.56 million, right? Why is that? It's because by by uh, by starting this policy, by giving all this energy to the policies in the first year, they actually increased the death benefit right away. And the cash value in two policies combined is fifty thousand eight hundred dollars, and loan available is ninety percent of that. So if you multiply fifty thousand eight hundred by ninety percent, this is how much they can uh, borrow from the policies in the first year, um, and the total cash value growth is $19.10 per day. So they decided to take out a loan immediately to recapture a vehicle lease payments. So the residual lease balance on, on, the, on the lease was $39,000. So they have 47 months left to pay. Um, if they didn't do it, they had, they, they had to pay almost four years. And the monthly lease payments is $830. So they took two policy loans, one from Jackson's policy and one from Marshall's policy for the amount of $39,000 and paid it off completely. Now, the interest rate on a policy loan is 6.5% simple annual interest. Total interest value on two policy loans cumulative is $2,535 per year or $6.95 per day. So this this calculation is based 39,000 loan by 6.5%. It comes to 2,535. Imagine that they never made a single repayment, right? Uh, and loan is increasing. The uh, amount of interest is being added to the principal every day, but they don't have to make any, uh, there's no minimum required premium. It's just being added to as an outstanding balance. So the loan is six ninety five per day. They redirected their payments of eight hundred thirty dollars to pay for the policy loans. Right now, they because they paid off the they paid off the uh, loan uh, lease payments. Now they don't have to pay them. And from the cash flow, eight hundred thirty is now freed up, right? So they can actually take this the same cash flow and redirect it to their own banking system. And that's exactly what they did. And they decided to pay the payments back for 60 months. And if you if you read Nelson's book, you will learn why you actually want to pay yourself a little bit more and a little bit longer than initially planned, right? So initially they wanted to, to pay it for 47 months, but when you pay more and then you pay longer, then you're basically feeding your system with more money and your system is overall growing faster and and uh, it is much more sound business. So as you see, the loan is $6.95 per day, but the daily growth is, what was it? It's what was nineteen ten per day, right? So let's look at what happens after one, after first month, they paid off the, the vehicle lease. Now they have, they made their first payment to the policy loan. $830 goes back into the insurance company as policy loan repayment. 
cash value increased by 573 in one month because the daily growth is $19.10 per day by 30 days, multiplied by 30 days, that's 573. The interest on the loan for one month is $211. That's uh, by multiplying um, 695 daily interest by 30 days, that's uh, $211. Total loan available actually increased by 1134. So they made, made a payment of 830, but the loan available increased by 1134. This is a calculation. 830, the payment is completely readvanceable if they want to. Plus 90% uh, of the cash flow increase minus 211. That comes to $1,134 per month. So after one year of them implementing this strategy, they have been paying those uh, uh, lease payments back to their system. Now the net worth increased by $13,608. Compare this number to 2265 profit that they were, they were um, getting from the TFSA investment, right? So is, that, is this number better in terms of getting the net worth increase? Of course, right? And by the way, when they invested the TFSA, they invested into stock market. They actually had to take on market risk. How much risk do they have right now to actually increase their net worth by 13,608 per year? How much risk do they, do they have of growing this, this cash, uh, cash value and net worth? The answer is zero. They can completely recapture their cash lease payments, including interest. So did they work any harder? No. Did they have to take and take on any additional risk? No. In fact, they actually got got rid of the market risk by selling the investments, right? They didn't need to, to pay more taxes and they just needed to, to change the flow of money, where the money is flowing. When the money was sitting in a TFSA and uh, they were making payment to the lease company, now the money was flowing from them. Right now, they only changed the where the money is being um, held or the warehouse of the money. So now $830, the same payment now is coming back to their system. They become, they are becoming their own banker. I'm sorry. Uh, just bear with me, I need to find my slide for some reason that just collapsed on me. While I'm trying to fix this uh, wonderful technology, Vern, do we have any questions maybe that we we could address? How are we doing on time? Oh, Roman, you're you're crushing it. My camera will kick in here in a second. Awesome. Um, yeah, you're 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 making good time uh, so far, Roman. I'm actually I can check the Q and A. I think they've been mostly answered so far. So good. You must be doing such a good job. There isn't a whole lot of questions. But there's been lots of participation, and there's also been uh, there's actually quite a lot on the uh, the YouTube mm -hmm. uh, live stream. I don't I can't pick out a whole lot of questions offhand here. But uh, folks, if you have some questions, uh, you can go ahead and chime in. Are you are, are you pretty much uh, wrapping up and looking for questions at this time, Roman, or do you have mm -hmm. a bit more mm -hmm. to go? Not yet, but I will. I'm pretty much. Uh wrapping up with the case study, but then I will have something else to share about my family. So uh, stay, stay with us and then uh, I'll, I'll just wrap up to show what exactly Marsha and uh, Jackson was, were able to actually achieve. Well, we can't, uh, we can't wait to hear your personal story as well, Roman. So we appreciate awesome. you sharing it. Thanks. Absolutely. Awesome. So 
that is a revolutionary change for them, right? By doing only one simple step, which is redirecting their savings and discretionary income into two par participating whole life policies, they were able to significantly reduce the financial leakage. So this helped them to, to change the way they were financing their family expenses as it relates to their needs as a, and, and with a significant result. So let's look at what they achieved after five years of doing exactly the same. So policy loan of 39,000 is completely paid off. The loan is recaptured. The loan amount of interest is recaptured $10,718. So all this amount of interest would have been otherwise lost to the banking system. And they they would never uh, they would never get to get to use this this amount again. The premium paid totally was one hundred thirty eight thousand three hundred dollars. The total cash value after five years is going to be one hundred forty two thousand forty dollars into two policies into policies, right? Total loan available is one hundred twenty seven thousand eight hundred thirty six dollars. Now, can what can they now do with this cash, with this loan available? Can they buy more cars? Maybe they can finance other expenses. What about the mortgage, right? I recently looked at my mortgage and I decided, you know what? Actually, my, my renewal is coming up in, in three years, in 2026. Why not actually focus on building my system so that it is big enough? And in 2026, instead of, you know, I don't know what the interest rate is going to be. But I really want to make sure that I reduce my liability to the bank and pay off this, um, partially pay off this mortgage with my policy loan so that I redirect the payments back to my system. Right now, I'm lucky I had a very nice interest rate and my, my mortgage payment is very little, but it's going to change in three years. So I'm, I really want to make sure that I do exactly the same as, as what Jackson and Marsha are doing. Can they now redirect their... Um, you know, the mortgage payments to the system, of course, right? So uh, most of the banks and especially big banks, they have this uh, terms and conditions on, on the mortgage where you can actually make extra payments and at renewal, you can actually bring it down and maybe extend it to another 30 years so that your payment actually goes down significantly and you free up additional cash flow from your income from your business from your job and you put it back to your system rather than just giving it to a bank right total debt benefit in five years was two million six thousand fifty uh, five hundred dollars so they are paying the premium still of twenty four thousand which is twelve thousand each for two policies the total cash value goes up by thirty thousand nine hundred and eighty per year from year five to year six i'll repeat they pay twenty four thousand per year and the total cash value goes up by 30,980. So that, it, that increases their net worth by 6,980 just in one year. How amazing that is. After 10 years, so they're still paying the same premium, 12,000 each, 24,000 for two policies. The total cash value goes up by 39,187 per year from year nine to year 10. The net worth increases by 15,187 is within just one year. If you compare year 10 and year year five, do you see the trend? Do you see what's happening? The net worth increases, constantly incre increases. Um, so whatever dollars they put in, it gives them life steam. Nelson would say that it is a life steam where the system produces more and more and more money and the the whole objective of the banker is to feed the system with more and more cash it's not a payment it is a solution that creates more cash value creates more cash value so many people think about insurance as as expense right and in in this example it is a solution to their financial uh, issues and th this creates a lot of a lot of steam live steam now after 20 years they are paying premiums of 23608 by the way it is uh, going a little bit down uh, because they can do so right so so they chose to actually a little bit decrease the their payment um 
can it go up? Of course it can go up, but based on their decision, it can also go down. They have flexibility, right? So the total cash value goes up the same exact year by 62,311 per year from year 1019 to, to year 20. Look at how much they put in and look at how much the, uh, the cash value increases in just one year. Is it threefold? Is it three times of, of what they put in? Almost, right? The net worth increases by $38,703 just within one year. So at this point, the total cash value is 818,000 and the total loan available is 736 because they've been, they've been doing this for 20 years now. The total cumulative premiums paid are 494 and $300. So they paid less than half a million in 20 years into two policies. And it created them $736,000 they can actually access on their terms. The total debt benefit at this point is $2.2 million. That is the power of compounding. Let's look at their objective of building wealth. So did they achieve their objective of building family protection? Yes. Do they have access to capital on their terms to finance large expenses in the family, like cars, vacation? Absolutely. They can even recapture their mortgage completely, right? So did they recapture their car lease payments? They did. Did, if they have a, an emergency, let's say a furnace breaks down or, you know, car breaks down, they need to buy winter tires, they need to, you know, if there is a family emergency, can they travel internationally? Of course, they can do anything they want. And if there's an opportunity, can they take this opportunity and increase the net worth even, even further by creating a new, you know, source of income? Of course. Now let's look at passive income at retirement and uh, live in a legacy. So after th 31 years, they actually decided to take passive income. And Jackson at this point is 66, Marsha is 65. The total cash value at this time is $1.737 million. So they decided to stop making premiums. They have option to continue, but they decided to stop making those premiums and they want, wanted to collateralize the policies with the bank. The banks love this product because they know they will get their money back for, for sure. So, uh, so next year they started pulling passive income from the bank and the bank opens a line of credit for them. And that is tax-free because it's, it's debt. The passive income for Jackson is $46,905 per year. And for Marsha it's $47,945. I'm sorry, 46,905 for Marsha and 47,945 for Jackson. Altogether, passive income is $94,850 per year, and that is tax free because that's that's debt, that's the loan. So the whole objective for them is not to service the debt. Uh, the interest is being accumulated and added to the principal until they die. Because they have enough cash uh, cash value to provide for their security for this loan, for these, uh, for, for these two loans. So what does the passive income look like for Jackson? So when he uh, starts taking this passive income, he takes it for 23 years and he passes away at 80, 89 years old. So total, total combined number, total combined amount that he receives is $1.1 million. The net estate value, which is a death benefit after the bank loan is paid off. So at passing, what happens is the bank will issue two checks. One check will go to the bank from the insurance company and it will take, take care of the outstanding principal and interest. And the other check will go to the beneficiary, name beneficiary in the policy tax-free. And that amount is 958,600 after the loan is paid off. How much money did, did Jackson put in? all together for, um, for 31 years. He put together, put into the, his policy $381,150. Is this amount like almost three times less than the passive income he received? Yes. And the total money out of this policy is passive income tax-free 1.1 plus almost a million dollars death benefit that the family receives. That comes to more than $2 million. $2, million sixty one thousand three thirty five and that is tax free because that benefit in Canada is tax free. 
passive income for Marsha. So Marsha receives passive income for 25 years and passes away at 90. So the total passive income received is 1.172 million. And the net estate value after the debt benefit pays off the loan at a bank is $1.127 million. So cumulatively, Marsha paid $377,808 as premium for 31 years. And money out, it happens to be a round number. Don't ask me why, it's just math it worked out this way. So it's 2.3 million. So it's 1.172 the passive income she received and also 1.127 million she left behind as net estate value uh, for the family. So this amount is actually six times less than what she received. My question to you is now, how much money do you want to put in there in your own banking system? Is an alternative investment an option even, even for such a passive income? Think about how much they would have need to create in, in the investment to, to do the same for them, right? So to, the investment has to earn constantly 6% net of taxes, net of fees for 56 years in a row. How is that? How realistic is that? 6%, do you think it's realistic for 65 years in a row, Vern? Uh, or do we have any any answers any any question sorry answers if six percent is realistic for the for the return <laughs> of this investment for 60, yeah. 56 years definitely have uh one person chiming in and saying no way let's see never <laughs> some people just no. start giving us uh, crying laughing emojis so <laughs> i think people will uh, understand that that's pretty unrealistic <laughs> yeah so also this investment has to provide access to liquid cash on demand without interrupting compounding, which is impossible. Well, it's very hard with an investment, but it is, it is a option with a whole life insurance. Also, there's no death benefit other than just account value. Let's say they open this investment and let's say it produced 6% in the first year. Great. What, what if they die? In the first year, how much money will the family receive? Probably just the account value plus six percent. That's it, right? So there's no family protection, but whole life insurance actually has this death benefit. If such an investment vehicle was a thing, can you imagine CRA actually not claiming its share of this investment? Probably they would be first in the first in line to actually claim this uh, the, their share, right? And their share would probably be huge. If you know what can do better than participating in whole life insurance, please let me know, because provided the same equal risks and the same terms and benefits, um, I don't know if there is any alternative investment to be compared to this, to this uh, vehicle to provide for this passive income. So they achieved the objective of um, making sure there is passive income in retirement, and that is only going up, it can never lose its value. And to leave a legacy, they also achieved an objective because just the legacy itself was much more than whatever they put in as a premium. So if Jackson and Marsha did it, so can you. Now, uh, I want to address Nelson's book again. I want to you know, open page 65 from this book and address the question, how do I get started? So assuming that you are by now sufficiently convinced that this is a course of action that you would like to take, the question becomes, how do I get started? Then the most important word that comes to my mind is desire. Without it, you probably cannot do it. Remember Parkinson's law. Everyone is already spending all financial resources on what he thinks is best. There has to be some honest introspection at this point. And a commitment to get out of financial prison must be a burning passion. So in order to get started, you need a desire and a commitment. I already know that my amazing audience already has a commitment. So we just need to get a right coach. So text the word schedule from your mobile phone to 780-809-4599 to book a call with one of our amazing advisors. And we will help you get started. We will help you better understand the system and the concept itself. And I will ask my team to actually uh, share this um, 
this number again in this, in the chat window so that um, our listeners can book book calls. Let me introduce Pushkar Family Banking System. From my, what my family bank looks like three years into the process. Back in 2020, this is where I discovered infinite banking for myself. The story was I was looking for ways to actually become mortgage-free faster. And I found a strategy that uh, would entail making extra payment to the mortgage. But this is not was clicking inside of me. I was kind of hesitant. Should I do that or not? Because, you know, giving too much money to banks and be free of mortgage is great, but where's my money? What if I need money to actually reaccess it? I will probably need to open a HELOC or home equity line of credit, but then paying interest again wasn't very exciting for me. So back in 2020, um, we had a baby. His uh, his name was R, R. Nelson, Rudolf Nelson. And at that time, my oldest son was 15. I have two sons, then three daughters, and then two sons again. So my son was 15, my second son was 14, Eugenia, 12, uh, second daughter, uh, 10, third daughter, eight, and then son, five, and then a newborn. And I have uh, my amazing wife, Natalia. And this is what the system of policies looks like for us when we just opened it, right? In 2020, I opened eight policies, one for me, bigger one, the bigger one, and then I opened small policies for my children, 1,200 each. As you see, your policy doesn't have to be like 20,000 or 50,000. It can be as little as 1,200. It can be as big as 15,000. It's up to you to decide, right? So I decided my number was about $25,000, $26,000 per year. And I basically broke it down between eight people. And by the way, you don't see my wife here because for her, I decided to do just a term insurance for now because she wasn't working. But I wanted to make sure that she also has protection. So my starting death benefit for me was uh, 1.7 million, and my every of my children also had uh, death benefit. But my cash value, my total cumulative cash value from all, all eight policies, three years ago in 2020 was 11,400 dollars. So I put in 26,000 and immediately have access to 11,400. My daily growth from all these policies initially was 12 dollars and 80 cents. And I will tell you later how I use my policy loan, by the way. And uh, let's look at what the same policies look like three years later. So the same policies, by the way, I have 12 policies now, but now I'm showing eight policies only to show you kind of the difference, the change, right? So three years ago, uh, I put in 26,000. Now in three years, I've put in $78,018. The asterisk is showing that this is only for the same policies. But on top of that, I also have additional policies. My total death benefit increased from 2.187 million to 2.386. So where did the $200,000 uh, additional death benefit showed up, uh, showed up from? It showed up from me properly structuring the policy so that my death benefit always go, goes up. My total cash value increased from $11,400 to $53,190. Again, it has an asterisk to show that my um, I have additional policies. This is not the total cash value I have. My total daily growth increased from $1,280 to $2,432. So every year I, I make sure that my daily growth increases by controlling my behavior. Let me show you how we used the policy loan so far. So all these words represent at least one loan. So, so my beautiful daughter, Eugenia, she is standing in, in, in a dental cab, uh, cabinet, uh, orthodontic cabinet. And she is, she, uh, it says, let your smile change the world, but don't let the world change your smile. So my first policy loan was used to finance her braces. Right. And then after that, I see how amazing, how beautiful her smile is. So I am feel so I'm feeling so comfortable, you know, um, 
knowing that we not only we financed this expense, but also we recaptured all the interest that would have otherwise left my company forever. Sorry, my my family forever. We also financed Mazda, Mercedes van. We financed Honda Civic. Uh, it's a third car that my son actually uh, took a policy loan for. We financed home insurance for 2022. We financed home insurance for 2023. How, so how this works is basically take a loan and I pay my home insurance bill for the whole year. And then I stay, start making payments back to my system. We financed trip to Florida. We financed car repairs. IKEA furniture, two Apple watches, lawyer's expense because I opened my corporation, digital camera, property taxes, car insurance, hot tub. Uh, we actually even flew uh, the giving, giving, um, you know, to the church from this from these policies and business expenses. So so far, um, a lot of money is flowing through, um, you know, through my system and recapturing all the interest. Let me actually introduce you to the to the numbers. So the expanding banking system, this is what it looks like. Total number of policies is 12. So I started with eight, now it's 12. The number of life insurance is nine. So as you see, if the policy is 12 and, and life insurance is nine, then probably some of my family members have more than one policy, right? And you can do the same. This is how you expand your system. Total death benefit increased by, uh, and now it is uh, 3,900,000. $50,000. Total cash value is $109,100 right now, just in three years. And they out, I have outstanding loans on 11 out of 12 policies. So the total uh, daily cash value growth is $57,40. That's including my all um, policies, not just the ones I started with, but also the new ones, right? So that if you multiply it by 365 days, that's $20,900 increase of the net worth per year. And monthly loan repayments I'm sending back to the system is $4,300. And I recaptured thousands of dollars of interest. If you look at those, those expenses I shared with you, you can imagine how much money I would have spent to banks financing and paying interest to the banks financing all those expenses. But now all the payments, 4,300 each month is coming back to my system, recapturing my interest. So let's do a maximum borrowing test. So um, I, I'm not gonna be sharing how much outstanding policy loans I have, but let's imagine I have maximum, right? So my loan available up to the maximum is $98,190. So that's 90% of my total cash value, which is $109,100 right now. Let's see if I borrow maximum amount from my, all my policies, will I still have a tailwind? Let's check. Interest on policy loans is actually 6.5% simple interest. Daily interest calculation. So uh, if I borrow maximum from my policy loans uh, and that's 98,190 multiplied by 6.5% simple interest, that comes to 63.82 per year. And if you divide it by 365 days, that's $17.49 per day. My total daily cash value growth is 57.40. Do you see the difference? The difference is my, my, my tailwind. Monthly loan repayments is 4,300. So loan available goes up every month by 53.25 each month. Why? Because I can recapture all my, my loan repayment again if I need to. And there's another $1,025 on top of that because I'm increasing, I'm, I'm, I'm getting my cash value increase and that's, that's the calculation. So $1,550 comes from $57.40 each day times 30 days and multiply by 90%, it comes to $1,550 plus my repayment, 4,300 per month, and minus the interest, $524.70. If you multiply $17.49 per day by 30 days, you will get $524.70. The outcome is 53.25 is increasing my total uh, loan available every single month. That's a revolutionary, revolutionary change. 
So in Nelson's book on page 43, Nelson says, this is the essence of what the infinite banking concept is all about. Recovering the interest that one normally pays to some banking institution and then lending it to others so that the policy owner makes what a banking institution does. It's like building an environment in the airplane world where you have a perpetual tailwind instead of perpetual headwind. Simple, isn't it? From this saying, from this quote, you can see that it says, lending it to others. Who are the others in my life that I lend money to? That is my, my family. And by the way, my extended family. And my children. So my son is now financing his Honda Civic. And he is happy about it because there's no policy. So there's no car loan. He bought it in, with cash. But now who is the banker in this transaction? He is the banker because he has a policy. And I am the banker because I also financed it, a part of it from my own policy. So he is paying mom and dad. And he knows that every single dollar that he pays into the system will come back to him. It's never lost to, to his life. Let's read what our clients have to say. On We have more than 800 five-star Google reviews. And I would really appreciate if you have um, you know, a couple minutes to leave a review. I will ask my team to share the Google review links. Uh, you can choose the closest location to you and click the link. And uh, it's, it just takes you a couple minutes to you know, select one or two or three or maybe five stars, and then maybe leave a couple, couple words for, for, for the comment for this, um, for this webinar. So let's read a couple of them. So Andrew Moore says, I'm so excited to start the new journey and I didn't know it was possible. So, so I, I actually didn't know it myself it was possible. Even though I was in the insurance business since 2016, I never knew that this, this amazing system existed. Thanks to the wonderful and knowledgeable people at Ascending Financial, my financial goal goals are on track with coaching and wealth building in Superdrive. Everything I do is for my family and I will fight to leave a legacy for my generations to come. Timothy, uh, Timothy says, Ascending Financial has been a pleasure to work with so far. Going through the process of gradually replacing, replacing big banks with your own private banking system. The team is great, and there's a ton of learning information made available to clients. Highly recommended. Martin says, great organization and people. Uh, the infinite banking concept is a very powerful tool in building long-term and generational wealth. I was walked through all I needed to set up policies for myself and for my kids. And I will read another one. Um, for my client, Raja says, it was nice working with Roman Pushkar and the team to set up insurance policy for me. Roman was very helpful in explaining the infinite banking concept and more. Happy to start joining with Ascending Financial. So, and the list goes on and on. There's a lot of, a lot of like hundreds of positive reviews and, and uh, I encourage you to actually go online and read those reviews. So it all sounds good, but I don't want to do this alone and you don't have to. The good thing is, is one, we have one-on-one -on -one coaching and uh, you will be working with an authorized infinite banking expert. So all our advisors are authorized infinite banking experts with Nelson Nash Institute, meaning that we did additional training on how exactly to do infinite banking, the way Nelson described in his amazing book, Becoming a Banker. So lifetime mentoring, quarterly group coaching sessions. We have one-on-ones -on -one with an advisor. And uh, after even after your policy is settled, it doesn't stop there. It's not something that we send you a policy and say, hey, Mr. Client, hope you'll get there. Good luck. No, there is a lifetime mentoring. We coach you how to use the process, how to achieve your financial objectives. If you have an objective to recapture your debt, your advisor will help you do that. If your objective is to invest, your advisor will help you do that. We have a lot of resources online. So we have two YouTube channels. One of them is Bankers Vault. And the other one is a podcast, which is, uh, so Richard and, and Jason Lowe, Richard Cantwell and Jason Lowe are co hosts of the podcast. It's, it's called Wealth Without Bay Street, where you can find a lot of great information and interview with clients and, and also our other people that uh, are involved in, in our coaching and helping uh, you to become your own banker. 
We have audio books. We have uh, a lot of great books um, on Austrian economics. We have a lot of books on how to become your own banker. You can buy both of Nelson's book. You can also buy um, the series for From Wealth Without Bay Street that Jason and Richard are actually publishing. And the most recent one, uh, I will take this chance to actually promote Henry's book. It's it's called uh, Keep Taxes Away From Your Wealth. So if you're interested how to keep your... <laughs> keep taxes away from your wealth and keep CRA away from your wealth, I would really recommend you to buy this book as well. And the coaching is available to you. So please take advantage of that and, and book a call with an advisor. So now you have two options. First option is to do nothing. Nothing changes if nothing changes. So you'll continue to work your butt off the banks and for the banks and everyone else now continues to get all your money. Second option is schedule your discovery call and take hold of your personal finances and put the control back in your hands. Picture a day where financial control is in your hands, not a bank, not the government, not the risky stock market. When your finances are exactly where, where you want them to be and you know with certainty that you have the freedom to travel when you want to travel, relax when you want to relax, and serve when you want to serve. So the time will go by anyways. So have it go by with this revolutionary system in place rather than just doing your financial transactions the old way. Click the link you received by text or text the word schedule to 70780-809-4599 and reserve a day anytime that works best for you. Take action now. Thank you so much for watching this presentation. I would love to hear if you have any questions and maybe if we have time, Vern, do we have any time to, to address some questions? Well, uh, thanks for a great job, Roman. Wow, that was amazing. <laughs> that was incredible. <laughs> wow. Thank so uh, getting lots of love on the YouTube live, by the way. Uh, lots of people giving you some shout outs here. So, um, you know, our team did such a great job, Roman, of answering the questions as we went through. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot. I, I think that uh, you did such a great job of just keeping it really clear, really concise. Um, so let's see here. I think I, I'm not sure. What was the actual scheduled time? Did you have it to go into yeah, 8 p.m.? to 9 p.m., uh, 9 p.m. Central, which is uh, 10 p.m. Eastern or... 8 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So I think we're on time. We want to oh, yeah, you, you, time. You did great. You did great. Um, I don't really see any uh, questions in the chat. There was only about uh, six total, and the team did a good job of answering them. Actually, there was only five, and one person just said thank you <laughs> for the answers. Awesome. So <laughs> that was the sixth. Uh, I don't see any questions here, Roman. Just lots of comments, lots of positive feedback for you. In fact, awesome. why don't we do that? We still have uh, about, uh, I can see about... 27 people on the call here i can see some love coming through why don't we just do a quick value check let's show roman some love but of course we also want to grow we want to get better here so if you don't mind just put in the chat uh put a one if you feel like you can't figure out why you're still on the call and this was a huge waste of your time and put a 10 if you feel like you can't wait to book your call with one of our teammates and that roman uh, brought a ton of value and, and did a great job okay so we're seeing so far some tens coming through don't be shy here we go. We got some tens for you, Roman. And uh, if you're on the Facebook or excuse me, the, uh, YouTube. the YouTube live, you can do the same thing. If you, you know, let's assume you receive some really good value, give us a 10. And uh, again, if you can't figure out why you still have the live stream on, and this was a big waste of your time, you can just put a one or anything in between. Okay. So we got one honest person. Somebody gave us an eight. So uh, I think that's great. An I appreciate eight. It's it. A pretty, pretty good that's score. Awesome. That was on the, that was on the, uh, on the YouTube, mm -hmm. but a lot of, a lot of tens. Thanks for a great presentation, 10, Chris said. So that's awesome. fantastic. A lot of 10s, Roman. So you did a fantastic job. Um, but I think uh, based on the fact that everybody uh, on our team crushed the questions and you did an amazing job, I think we can we can give everybody back the rest of their evening. Thank you so much for tuning in and uh, see, you, see you soon. Congratulations for staying to the end. Congratulations. <laughs>